I hope y'all are ready for a spicy November. We are going to have a long, drawn-out, broken election process. It won't make sense, and it will be because the Democrats demanded it, but then also blamed Trump for it. I kid you not. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you to Barack Obama says everybody should be able to vote by mail and takes aim at Donald Trump's claims it will lead to widespread fraud. <laughs> How Trump can't say that. It's certainly not true. Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton says the United States must be ready for the possibility that Donald Trump will not go quietly from the White House if he loses in November and may blame mail-in votes. There you go, everybody. Is that their plan? Is that the game? We know Trump's going to win. We know it'll be a landslide. So let's demand mail-in voting. And then no matter what happens, blame the chaos on Trump and say he's manipulating the chaos. You know, you know, you know, mail-in voting. It's so easy to disrupt. And I've gone over so many stories. But what am I supposed to say to this? They're going, we, we definitely need mail-in voting. Donald Trump's going to blame mail-in voting. Well, hold on. You just set, you just set the whole thing up. It's like you, you, you've created a trap. No matter what Trump does at this point, you've set it up so that you get what you want. And no matter what he says, it's going to be his fault. Ah, OK, you know what, man? I get it. It's the name of the game. It's been going on forever. Let's read the first story. Let's see what Obama's on about. Voting by mail shouldn't be a partisan issue, especially during a pandemic. But Obama said everybody should be able to request an absentee ballot and make their voice heard in every, every election. Now, mind you, the New York Times already wrote last month that New York is completely overwhelmed. 65,000 plus ballots are being rejected because of the post office. In California, 100,000 ballots were not delivered on time and also did not get counted. But sure, Obama, thanks. Oh, OK, I know I missed it. I could have said thanks, Obama. Here, so it was just a tweet he put out, I guess. And that's the gist of it. But I, I bring up the Obama part first because Hillary Clinton has been surprisingly active lately leading to the same old, same old speculation that Hillary Clinton, she's running. I don't know about that, but is Joe Biden really going to be the guy? Maybe. We got about a month until the DNC and they're supposed to pick the VP. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? I'm not convinced it'll be Hillary. I think it might be Biden. You know why? The Democrats aren't running a candidate. They're just running against Trump. The Democrats are trying to shore up the vote through hatred. Trump supporters are actually being motivated more by fear. A little bit of hatred, but a lot more fear. And again, I said it before, but I, I'm not saying to be disrespectful. I'm saying Donald Trump supporters are scared about what happens to this country if he loses. They're scared about their freedoms being stripped. They're scared about the potential for the establishment, the cronies to cheat, to lie, to steal from them, to destroy the economy, and destroy their children's futures. That's a real fear. And that motivates people. Because I can run faster scared than you can mad. The Democrats are betting on anger to rile people up to go out. But the Democrats aren't scared the world's ending. They just hate Trump. Well, that's the point. So anyway, back to the story. Hillary Clinton says the United States must be ready for the possibility that Trump will not go quietly. Yes, just more hatred. Trump hasn't done anything. What, is he, what has he done? Why are they saying this? Speaking to Trevor Noah on Monday night's episode of The Daily Show, Clinton said she could not rule out voter suppression and foreign interference in this year's vote. And there it is. You see, Newsweek already published a story saying that Donald Trump may claim China interfered or that Bill Barr will claim China interfered in Wisconsin, Michigan or Pennsylvania. Therefore, we must negate the vote or investigate. We won't make the deadlines. And then Trump ends up winning. That's what Newsweek is saying. It was written by the, for, uh, by the uh, founder of MSNBC. Wait, hold on. Now Clinton is saying foreign interference might help Trump. There it is. There's no way to actually deal with this. The election is going to be it, I, chaos is an understatement. Bedlam. I love that word, by the way. But think about it. Let's say there is foreign interference. Trump and Biden will both point the finger and blame each other. What do we do? Who will you side with? If there is not a clean election, it will really come down to whose side are you on? Are you with Trump or are you against him? If Trump loses and there's an interference and Bill Barr intervenes, the left will be emboldened. If Trump wins and there's interference, 
they'll just claim that Russia or whoever cheated for Trump. And this is the proof we've been waiting for. They've planted the seeds over the past several years. So they set him up in every way possible. They say he may blame foreign interference for his loss. Hillary says it may be foreign interference helping him win. No matter which way it goes, it will be Trump's fault. So what is a what is a sane regular person supposed to do? I don't know. I'll read a little bit more. Quote, well, I think it's a fair point to raise as to whether or not if he loses, he's going to go quietly or not. And we have to be ready for that. Clinton said that Trump's repeated warnings of mass voting fraud, if mail-in ballots are, are in widespread use in November, did not stand up to scrutiny. There have been so many academic studies and other analyses which point out that it's just an inaccurate, fraudulent claim. It's not. She's lying. You see what she did there? This is, this is sophistry. What she said was, there have been academic studies which point out it's inaccurate, fraudulent claim. What claim? Not Trump's. Because Trump has talked about fraud, yes, but fraud exists. A guy was just charged and pled guilty in West Virginia. And we also have four people in northern New Jersey who are facing charges. Acorn was accused of voter fraud, no longer exists. And if you do a general Google search, you will find numerous stories. Now, you may say, but those are anecdotal. It doesn't matter. If Donald Trump says he believes there will be fraud, and fraud literally does happen, that's a true statement. I mean, first of all, it's Trump's opinion, but this is what she does. This is how they make the argument. But the analysis said, the analysis said widespread, define widespread. If there's some fraud, there can be fraud. And it only, Trump lost some states by a few thousand votes. There isn't, there isn't that problem. All the games that are played to try and keep the vote down, that's the real danger to the integrity of our election. That combined with this information and misinformation, and all the online shenanigans we saw in 2016. She continued, Republicans have two prongs to their strategy to try and win. The first, try to prevent many people who think they won't vote for them from voting. So make the lines really long where young people vote, uh, uh, of African Americans vote, or Hispanics vote, or African Americans vote, or Hispanics vote. Try to make vote by mail as difficult as possible. When in fact, that is how Donald Trump votes. And everyone who knows vote by mail understands that. Except what's, what's being omitted is that when you have a smaller portion of, vote, of, of your vote being mailed in, things seem to be fine. When literally everyone does it, things get overloaded. I read a story the other day. Through no fault of their own, thousands of voters' ballots were not counted because the post office made a mistake. Is that what's going to happen? No matter what it is, they're setting it up. If Trump loses and there really is evidence of interference— they will say, see, we warned you, Trump's cheating. We told you he would do this. And if he does win, they'll say, see, he's cheating. We told you he would do this. No matter what, win or lose, win or lose. The, uh, let's see. She, she said she works with Democratic docket to support lawsuits to make the vote available. Clinton said they're maintained, however, real danger. OK, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up with this point. I'm tired of having the conversations. All right. When it comes to November, I very likely will be voting for Donald Trump. That's where I'm leaning. It's not definitive. We'll see what happens. There's one thing that really changed in the past few months as I've been talking about the need to support the Republicans or Trump. The first is cancel culture and the culture war. If we do not rebalance political discourse, we are doomed. That's why we need a Section 230 reform, and only the Republicans will do it, and there's no guarantee they will. So I will begrudgingly, begrudgingly vote for people who, and on many policy issues I, I disagree with, if they're willing to support 230 reform. There's only one reason, as far as I'm concerned, that Trump gets a major boost in my book. Look, I love the Garden of Heroes idea. I love, um, I, I love the idea of cherishing history and those who sacrificed, those who had planted trees whose shade they knew they would never sit in. But we get to. I love respecting the past. And when there's bad things in the past, we condemn the past. But the good things, the heroes, I like what Trump is doing. Donald Trump wants to pull our troops out of Afghanistan. He's been trying. He wants to pull our troops out of Syria. He's been trying. But the media and the establishment, many Republicans and Democrats, have sought to block him. So I made a joke the other day. You see, I was jokingly jamming to a punk rock song, just riding off the top of my head to my friends. And it was the joke was that I sang, we must, you know, things like we must end the fascist imperialist state of the United States. We must end the foreign wars. We must end the regime change war, the wars for oil conquest opium. We must end the war and stop the, the, the killing of civilians. Vote Donald Trump. And then everyone laughs. Everybody laughed. That's the joke. 
that if you were going to scream in anger about all of this, I'll tell you why they want to stop Trump. Because Trump wants to end the war. It's really funny when I see the, 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 the far left. They should be supporting Trump over this one. You know what my position is right now? Joe Biden is going to be the war guy. The, uh, Obama was the war guy. Clinton was the war lady. They were war, 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 blowing up stuff, bombing stuff, conquest, whatever. I don't like it. I don't like any of it. Donald Trump right now, a lot of bad things. But my biggest issues have always been foreign policy because, you know, that's, I don't know. I just, I've always felt like everything else is stamp collecting. We're, we're arguing about budgets and resources. We're doing nation building overseas. Come on. Let's talk about bringing our soldiers home, protecting our country, and then using our resources. Maybe we deploy these same people to do nation building in our own nation and help, help change the lives in this country. Trump wants to bring those troops home. Biden doesn't. Democrats don't. Republicans don't. That's the only thing I say. If anyone asks you why you're voting for Trump, just say, you know, he recently came out and was trying to pull the troops out of Afghanistan. Joe Biden wouldn't do that. He's talked about the need for more troops. And, you know, the Obama administration doesn't have a good track record. So everything else doesn't matter. They say, yeah, but, but Trump's racist. Well, you know, yeah, maybe. But uh, we've killed way too many people in the Middle East. And I think it's about time it stops. And so if that means four more years of Trump and he gets it done, you know, at least we'll have stopped killing the brown people in the other parts of the world. That's all that matters to me. I mean, there's a lot more that matters to me, but that's, that's huge. We'll see how things play out. I don't trust Joe Biden. I think he's, I think he's nuts. I think he's going to fall asleep and do nothing. If Trump gets our troops out of Afghanistan, wow. I said this before. I was asked like, what it would take to vote for Trump. And I said, if he appointed Tulsi Gabbard to a security advisor position, Yang to an econo economic advisor position, and pulled our troops out of the Middle East. So that's why I say right now, he's trying to pull our troops out of the Middle East. That's the biggest one. If he does it, Anyway, that's that's I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment will be tomorrow at 10 a.m. on this channel, and I will see you all then.